In this series of videos, we're going to be reviewing the most important concepts of Chemistry 11 that directly relate with the Biochemistry Unit in Biology 12. The first topic that we're going to review is the concept of electronegativity as it is foundational to many of the other topics that we will review. Electronegativity, for those that don't remember, is the measurement of how well an element attracts electrons from other elements and also how well it is able to hold onto its own electrons and prevent other elements from taking them. We can measure electronegativity by looking at what we call an element's electronegativity constant, which is found here on the periodic table, usually right below the atomic number. So carbon's electronegativity constant is 2.5, nitrogen's is 3.0, oxygen's is 3.5, and fluorine with the highest electronegativity on the whole periodic table with an electronegativity constant of 4.0. For those that want a background on where these numbers actually come from, you can do a review of the atomic radius and ionization energy topics as these two factors highly influence how well elements can attract electrons. So in general, the higher an electronegativity constant is, the more easily that element is able to attract electrons. And as we'll see when taking a look at the first two pairs of elements, electronegativity is very important in determining the type of bonds that form between two atoms. So to understand this, we can take a look at the two pairs of atoms, a bond between two hydrogen atoms and a bond between a hydrogen and a carbon atom. This dotted line represents exactly halfway in between the two atoms in the bond, and depending on the electronegativity of each atom, we can see where the two electrons in the bond are going to fall. We can do this by doing a simple calculation measuring the difference in electronegativity between the two elements in the bond, which we label as delta En for short. With two hydrogen atoms, this is a very easy calculation because each hydrogen has the same electronegativity constant and 2.1 minus 2.1 we know is zero. This indicates that neither atom in the bond prefers electrons more than the other element, which means that the two electrons that make up the bond are basically going to be found exactly divided evenly between the two atoms in the bond like this. However, if the delta En value is not zero, we see that this is no longer true. So if we do an electronegativity difference calculation with carbon and hydrogen, we see 2.5 minus 2.1 comes to 0 0.4, indicating that because carbon has a higher electronegativity constant than hydrogen does, that carbon is going to pull the electrons in the bond closer to it than to hydrogen, meaning that we would expect to find the electrons in the bond right around here, closer to carbon than to hydrogen, but not significantly far apart. The convention in chemistry is if the electronegativity difference is less than 0 0.5, which carbon and hydrogens definitely is, we say that the electrons in the bond are shared equally between the two atoms in the bond or very close to it, close enough so that these electrons don't affect either of the atoms in any meaningful way. And this type of bond with equal sharing of electrons are what we call non-polar covalent bonds, meaning that the electrons are shared rather than transferred. That's what a covalent bond is. And we'll talk exactly about what non-polar means when we take a look at the opposite of non-polar covalent bonds, polar covalent bonds. So two examples of polar covalent bonds are the bonds that exist between hydrogen and nitrogen and hydrogen and oxygen. So let's draw the same dotted line indicating the halfway point between each pair of atoms and see what the difference is. 
So firstly, we'll need to check the electronegativity constants of nitrogen and oxygen, which we see are 3.0 and 3.5, respectively. And if we remember hydrogen's electronegativity constant of 2.1, we see that the electronegativity difference values between each atom are significantly larger than before. So 3.0 minus 2.1 is 0 0.9, which is greater than 0 0.5. And again, this indicates that nitrogen has a much stronger attraction to electrons than hydrogen does, meaning that nitrogen is going to pull the electrons farther away from hydrogen than carbon was able to. Now, because oxygen has an even higher electronegativity constant than even nitrogen, its delta En value is going to be even larger, 3.5 minus 2.1 comes to 1.4, which is quite large. So here, oxygen is going to pull the electrons in the bond even closer to it than nitrogen is able to, resulting in the electrons maybe being over here closer to oxygen than nitrogen was able to go. So in chemistry conventions, we can see that these electronegativity values are greater than 0 0.5, and remember, anything less than this is a nonpolar covalent bond, but they're also less than the benchmark of 1.7, after which we would actually get ionic bonds where electrons are not shared at all, but transferred. And any bond that falls within a delta En value between these two, we say that the electrons are still shared. It's not enough for a full transfer to get an ionic bond, but the sharing is now unequal. And this results in the formation of what we call a polar covalent bond rather than a nonpolar covalent bond. In terms of the meaning of the word polar, we know that as an adjective, the noun form of this word is pole, and anything in chemistry that has a pole has some sort of positive or negative charge. And because of the fact that the electrons in these bonds are much closer to one element than another, we can say that nitrogen and oxygen here are effectively gaining electrons, and because we know that electrons have a negative charge, when you gain electrons, that means that you are accumulating some kind of negative charge. And because, conversely, the electrons are moving farther away from hydrogen, we can say that in both of these cases, hydrogen is effectively losing electrons in the same way that, that an element would in an ionic bond, but just not to the same degree. So we can say that a loss of negative charge produces some kind of positive charge. Now, because these aren't ionic bonds, because these electrons are not fully transferred to each of the atoms, we can label these as a partial charge, which we indicate with the lowercase Greek letter delta, which we draw like this. So a delta with a positive sign indicates that there is a partial positive charge, while a delta with a negative sign indicates that we have a partial negative charge. And this phenomenon here, where we have two charges that are opposite uh, on opposite ends of a bond, are what we call dipoles. Again, literally meaning a pole referring to some sort of positive or negative charge, and di meaning that we have one positive and one negative in the same bond. To test your knowledge of using electronegativity to identify polar and nonpolar covalent bonds, see if you can identify where the positive end and where the negative end of each dipole is in each of the three pairs of bonds below.